Miami Dolphins have proven time and time again that, under the team's current regime and leadership, they genuinely do not care about the outside perception of their football team. And, apparently, neither do the players on the roster. Head coach Brian Flores was fearless on Saturday night to make the same bold decision that prompted so much speculation last month when he pulled his rookie quarterback from the football game and handed the offense over the QB Ryan Fitzpatrick in the final moments of a winnable football game to try to get the job done. The first time Miami pulled this play, Fitzpatrick came up short as the Dolphins saw Broncos safety Justin Simmons jump a skinny post to Devontae Parker in the end zone to seal the game. But this time around, Fitzpatrick was every bit of the moniker, Fitzmagic, connecting on 9 of 13 attempts for 182 yards and a score in Miami's miraculous 26-25 victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. The win pushed the Dolphins' record to 10-5 and kept the team's playoff hopes in their own hands. The team's playoff hopes in their own hands for another week. And when next week rolls around, don't expect a quarterback controversy. Flores iced any chance of that in the post-game interview. He was asked several times in different ways. Did the events of Saturday night give him any reconsideration about the quarterback position? No. Who is your starting quarterback for Week 17? Two is the starter. No further comments necessary. If this feels like an unprecedented situation, it is. But the Dolphins should be applauded for simultaneously protecting their young franchise quarterback from piling up mistakes and taking sacks while also getting him valuable playing time while also winning football games and getting to this point. Miami is 8-2 since making their initial swap from Fitzpatrick to Tungavailoa, and two of the wins have Fitzpatrick's fingerprints all over them. Ultimately, there's no ego in this quarterback room, and the messaging to the Dolphins and both quarterbacks is clear. If we think you're going to give us the best chance to win, you're going to play. How Brian Flores justifies staying with one over the other as the starter is between him and the locker room. All we know is that for the short-term results, there's zero room for argument. 2. Ahead of the Miami Dolphins' critical Week 15 matchup against the New England Patriots, it seemed as though the Dolphins would be able to get some reinforcements from their injured skill group. Tay Mike Jasicki and WR's Devontae Parker and Jakeem Grant were all questionable but there was optimism that at least Parker would be ready to go in the build-up to the game. He wasn't. Parker, along with Grant and Jasicki, did not dress in the Dolphins' 22-12 win over the Patriots. Fast forward to this week and Grant and Jasicki were back in action, yet Parker was mysteriously absent from the lineup due to the hamstring issue that had kept him out of the game against the Patriots in the week prior. The impression was that Parker was set to play Week 15 based on a report by ESPN the night before the Patriots game. 3. There are no shortage of deserving candidates for the NFL's 2020 Coach of the Year award. The Cleveland Browns, under the watch of first-year coach Kevin Stefanski, are sitting at 10-4 entering Week 16 action and poised for their first playoff berth since 2002. Washington football team coach Ron Rivera coached through cancer treatments this fall and has his team sitting at 6-8 and potentially ready to claim an NFC East division title. Of course, Kansas City Chiefs head coach Andy Reid has the defending Super Bowl champions rolling week in and week out, owning just one loss this season. But with all due respect to all of them, Brian Flores is the most deserving candidate for the 2020 Coach of the Year award. Because Flores, like Cleveland, has Miami in position to challenge the most wins they've had as an organization in the last 20 years 11. 11. But, unlike Stefanski, the roster Brian Flores entered this season with didn't have the same top-tier talents that the Browns had at their disposal this season, Cleveland's talent level has been well established after they entered 2019 as one of the offseason darlings in all of football. And when you consider the dynamics of the Dolphins' quarterback room and how Flores, the Dolphins and both Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua Tungavailoa have navigated some pretty unprecedented quarterback shuffling, that is where Flores' resume separates itself from the rest of the pack. Six games with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Another three and a three quarters with Tungavailoa. Mop up duty and another start the following week for Fitzpatrick. Tunga Vailoa returning and performing at peak performance in the two weeks that followed en route to another three and three quarter game stretch of Tunga Vailoa, only to turn to Fitzpatrick again with the Dolphins' playoff lives on the line. Fitzpatrick, of course, obliged. The Dolphins pulled out a miraculous 26 25 victory courtesy of Fitzpatrick's late game heroics, 
only for Flores to emphasize after the game that the team merely needed a spark, and Tungavailoa is this team's starting quarterback. You don't see NFL head coaches play this kind of musical chairs with their most prestigious position. Fitzpatrick in a post-game interview that he has complete trust in Flores and that their decision-making process works because the second-year head coach is a great communicator. He's a great coach, too. Navigating these turbulent quarterback waters en route to a 10-win season proves that plenty clear. And when you take it all into consideration, that is why he's the only choice for the 2020 NFL Coach of the Year award.